we all suffer from some form of implicit bias. And while there's a pro this is a problem for the average American, it's an even bigger issue for police officers who make life and death decisions multiple times each day on a daily basis. The media has villainized police officers, and in many cases, rightfully so. But is it possible to consider that these issues are a result of deep-seated and subconscious bias based on culture and worldview? I believe this goes beyond labeling a police officer as bad, um, but ties to a deeper and more fundamental societal issue, which is why I propose implicit bias training as a solution for police misconduct and brutality. Subpoint A, resolution. The United States federal government should substantially increase the regulation of state and local police misconduct in the U.S. by mandating implicit bias training and by adopting the Police Training and Independent Review Act of 2017. Subpoint B, defining terms. Jack Lasser, who is an expert on implicit bias training from UC Berkeley, he describes implicit bias as a positive or negative association between groups that resides in the subconscious memory. It resides up here. So we have implicit bias and we don't even know it. It's not a conscious thought. Subpoint C, plan tax. By adopting into law the Police Training and Independent Review Act of 2017, states receiving burn JAG funds, they would be required to administer sensitivity training for law enforcement officers. This would include new officer training and then an annual like recertification kind of thing, um, like an eight hour session. States that are in non-compliance, however, would lose the funds and it would be reallocated to states that um, take implicit bias training seriously and are in compliance. Subpoint D uh, will introduce criterion. After reviewing the advantages that I'm going to talk about, I'm sure you will see the benefit of implicit bias training as it will reduce police brutality and save precious lives. So let's get on with it. Advantage, advantage number one, subpoint A, harms. A study by a UC Davis professor by the name of Cody T. Ross found evidence of a significant bias in the killing of unarmed black Americans related to unarmed white Americans. And he found that the probability of this happening where a black man would be shot versus a white man, same scenario, was 3.5 times the rate of a white person. We've all heard stories of unarmed black men losing their lives as a result of poor judgment from a police officer, so let's do something about it. So point B, inherency. Unless we provide training and support around acknowledging and identifying implicit bias, many more lives will be lost. Let's take the case of um, Philandro Castile, who was fatally shot in a routine traffic stop in 2016. Okay, so he's stopped. He's got a small child, his daughter, in the backseat of the car, and he is brutally shot um, and killed. We can't allow this type of thing to continue, and it's not going to change without real intervention and change. So subpoint C, solvency. A recent study published by Devine, Forsher, Austin, and Cox has shown that implicit bias training is beneficial in reducing implicit bias. Um, in a 12-week longitudinal study, people who received the training showed dramatic reduction in implicit bias, and it also led to their better uh, personal awareness of deep-seated racial bias that they didn't even realize they had. As you can see, there is a way to lower the incidence of police brutality through racial or implicit bias training, and then we can save countless lives, which is really what matters. Advantage two, we're going to talk about the financial implications. So point A, harms. According to the Wall Street Journal, in 2014, 10 U.S. cities with the highest population paid out, and this is just 10 U.S. cities, a whopping $248.7 million as a result of police brutality. As a taxpayer, I'd rather see that money go towards education or some type of rehabilitation program versus paying, you know, out to money to families because their, their family members were brutally killed. Subpoint B, inherency. We are all victims. We are all victimized by police brutality. We may be a direct casualty or eventually pay for it out of our tax dollars, right? There is no reason to believe that this trend will change without taking some type of action. And then subpoint C, solvency. 
According to a survey which tabulated police brutality payouts between 2006 and 2011 in the city of Albuquerque, New Mexico, they paid out a whopping $2,000 per police officer per year. Okay, Now, the average Albuquerque, New Mexico police officer makes $87,000 per year. So let's do the math. $87,000 a year is $1,580 per week, which translates to $400 per day. Okay, So if we dedicated in just, let's say, Albuquerque, New Mexico, one eight-hour day per year of training for a police officer would cost $400 versus $2,000 in these payouts. So it's a net net savings of $1,600 $1, per officer per year. This is a tremendous savings to the taxpayer, right? So in conclusion, you know, not only is there a huge price in human life, which is really the most important thing, but there's also a price to be paid in the hardworking taxpayer dollars. Implicit training will make a significant impact on both. Thank you.